Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're gonna start working on a dropper. This will probably be done in a couple parts. I'm not sure exactly how many it's gonna be. What I have right now is just the start of a dropper. So on the side here, it has an on-off button. When I click on this button here, it turns the dropper on. And then every two seconds, it drops a part on this conveyor belt here and then brings it to the end. And then if I click the button again to turn it off, it stops. And then whenever I want to, I can turn it back on to restart the process. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. As far as making this dropper, I'm sure you guys can make a much better looking one than I did. What I did though is just insert a model into the workspace. I called this model dropper, and then I have a few different things inside of it here. So what I did to make something like this is I started with a part. And then you're going to scale this to be like the base part, which is the white part here. So this is probably not going to end up very pretty. I'm just going to do this quickly as an example. Okay, so we have some sort of base for it. And then I'm going to start with another part that's going to go on top. And I'm just going to change the color so it's obvious where I have different parts. Okay, so we'll move this on top here. Okay, we'll stretch it out a little bit. Okay, so that's good enough. And then we're gonna create another part that's gonna go out this way. Okay, and I'll change the color of this one as well. So we'll make this one green. And then I'm gonna move it up to the orange one. Okay, and then we'll resize it. And then what I did at this point was group these three different parts. So you just select them and then go to the model section and press union. Okay, and now they're one union part. And this is the part that I renamed to base. This part underneath here is separate, so just add another part into the game. And this is gonna go directly under the green part here. So I'll just change this one to purple. So we'll move it up to the green part. Okay, so something like that would be fine. This part right here is what I renamed to drop zone. So this part right here would be the same as this one here. And inside my model, that's called drop zone. And the last part is the switch. So that's just another part that we put on the side. And I'll change this one to blue. So just go ahead and resize it to whatever size you want to, and then slap it on the side. And then for the material for this one, it was neon. You can make this look however you want to, as long as you have the three different parts, you have some sort of base, you have a drop zone, which is this part underneath here, and you also have some sort of switch. Okay, so now that we have a basic understanding of how to do this, I'm going to get rid of the ugly one, and then we'll just focus on the slightly less ugly one. Okay, so there's one more thing we have to add to this model before we start with the scripting, and that's gonna be a bool value. So for your model here, just click on the plus sign, and then you're gonna search for bool value, and click on it right here, and then you're gonna rename it to running. After that, we're gonna be writing two different scripts for our model here. One's gonna be directly inside the model, and the other one is gonna be inside the switch. So inside the switch here, make sure you have a click detector, and then we're gonna start with this script right here. Inside the script, we're gonna start with a variable for the dropper model. So we'll say local dropper, and this is gonna be equal to script.parent, and then we actually have to add another dot parent. So the reason we have to do that, script.parent would get us up one level, so that would bring us up to the switch, and then to get us up to the dropper model, we have to add the extra dot parent. Next, we're gonna create a variable for the switch, so we're gonna say local switch is gonna be equal to script.parent, and then we'll create a variable for the click detector. So we'll say local click, and this is gonna be equal to switch dot click detector. Okay, next we're gonna say click dot mouse click, and we're gonna say colon connect, and we're gonna connect this to a function. Inside this function, we wanna check to see whether our dropper is running or not. So we're gonna say if dropper, dot running, which is our bool value. So this is either gonna be true or false. If dropper dot running dot value, and we can say equal to true, but just leaving it off does the same thing. If it's equal to true, that would mean the dropper is running already and our button should be green. So in that case, we wanna change it back to red. So we'll say switch dot brick color is gonna be equal to brick color 
dot new. And we're going to set it equal to really red. Okay, and for the other case, we're going to say else. And this would be when running is equal to false. So in that case, that means our dropper is off and we want to turn it on. So we would say switch dot brick color. And we're going to say that's equal to brick color dot new. And this time we're going to set it equal to lime green. And then to change the running value, what we're going to do is say dropper dot running dot value is going to be equal to not. And then the same thing. Okay, so the way this sign right here works, let's say that the running value is equal to true. Then by saying not true, that's going to make it false. If the dropper running value is equal to false, then by saying not false, that's going to be equal to true. So that's just kind of a short way of switching the values. Then depending on what the value is, we're either going to make the button red or green. All right, so let's go ahead and run the code and we can check out this part. Okay, so what I'm going to do before we test this out is I'm going to open up the dropper model and then we can take a look at running. So right now running is equal to false. So when I click on it, it turns green. And then over here for this section, it changes it equal to true. When I click it again, it changes back to red and then changes the value back to false. Okay, so it looks like that part is working. So the next part we're gonna work on is making parts come out of our dropper. To do that, we're gonna be writing a script that will be directly inside of the model. For this script, we're gonna start by saying local dropper, like we had before. It's gonna be equal to script dot parent. Then we're gonna say local drop zone. So we're gonna be creating a variable for our drop zone part. This is gonna be equal to dropper dot drop zone. After that, we're going to make a while loop. So I'm gonna say while wait. And then what we're gonna do inside of this loop is we're going to check to see whether the running value is equal to true or false. So we're gonna say if dropper dot running dot value. So this will be if it's equal to true. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to wait for two seconds. And then we're going to create a new part. So we'll say local drop, and this is gonna be equal to instance dot new. Inside of the parentheses, we're going to put part. And then after this, we're just going to define some properties of this part. So we'll say drop dot position. So this is where it's gonna spawn in. And that's gonna be equal to drop zone. And then we have two different options here. You can either add a small correction vector. So you can do something like minus and then vector three dot new. And then for the Y part, you would set this to maybe either one or two. The other option, if you go to drop zone, and then for the can collide property, you can turn that off. So either or, or you can do both if you want to, either add a small correction vector that's going to lower it down a little bit, or just for the part itself, turn can collide off. Like I said before, it's not gonna hurt if you do both, so I'm just gonna leave it like this. And then after that, I'm gonna say drop, dot size, and this is gonna be equal to vector three dot new. You can set this to whatever size you want to. I'm just gonna choose one by one by one. And finally, we're gonna set the drops parent equal to the workspace. So I'll say drop dot parent is equal to game dot workspace. You can change other properties of this part if you want to, but for now, I'm just gonna keep it simple and we'll stick with what we have for now. All right, so let's go and run the game and make sure this part's working. All right, so right now our dropper is off and you can see that it's not producing any items. Let's go ahead and turn it on. After two seconds, we get a part that drops out. And then every two seconds, it's going to drop out a new part. And after thinking about it, I'm probably gonna get questions in the comments on how to change the other properties. So let's just go ahead and get that out of the way now. So let's go ahead and start with the color of this. So we'll say drop dot brick color. It's gonna be equal to brick color dot new. And then we'll choose a new color for it. So let's do really blue. You can also change the shape if you want to. So we'll say drop dot shape. And this is gonna be equal to enum dot part type. And let's make the shape a ball. And then one final one, let's do drop dot material. It's gonna be equal to enum dot material. And let's make this equal to neon. If there's other properties that you wanna change but I haven't covered it, just let me know in the comments. But let's go ahead and run the game and we can see how this looks. All right, so let's go ahead and turn on the dropper. 
Now, instead of the square parts, we have parts that look like this here, which is actually pretty cool. And I was just about to end this video, but I realized we totally skipped this conveyor belt right here. So before we end, let's go and take a look at that. So in the Explore menu here, I call this one Conveyor. There's no scripting that we have to do for this part, but just make sure that the part is anchored. And then down in the Properties section, Locate Velocity. And then we're either going to have to change the Z part, which will be the last one, or the X part, which is the first one. So just experiment with those two. Try the X part first. If it goes the wrong direction, then you know it's the Z part. Just to help you out a little bit, let's go ahead and make it incorrect, and I can show you how to fix it. So let's say I started with the X part and made that 20. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what happens. Okay, let's go ahead and test out our dropper. Okay, and when we test it out, we see it's going toward the dropper, which is totally the wrong direction. So that would let us know that we need to switch it from the X to the Z. If you have it set on the Z and the same thing happens, that will let you know that you need to go from the Z part to the X. So if you stop your game, we would go back to the velocity section. And here we would change it from the X part to the Z part. And let's say we tried it out and we tried negative 20. Let's go and take a look and see how that looks. And when we run it this time, we see that it's close. It's running in the same direction as the conveyor belt. It's just going the wrong way. If you see something like that, that would let you know that you need to change the sign of it. So if you had negative 20, change it to positive 20. And if you had positive 20, change it to negative 20. All right, so I think that finally covers everything. So let's go ahead and stop with this video. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.